I had just moved to LA. Hmm. So in Canada, I'm perfectly fine being biracial. Okay. But you're not fine here. I don't have the choice here. I'm not biracial here. You don't get to choose oh. when you're here. Okay. Hmm. And so I didn't know that. I had to learn the hard way. Because I had cousins. I have cousins who are half Hispanic, yeah. half black, and they're yeah. just identified as fully black. And I, I never understood that because in Canada, not only can we embrace multiculturalism, but I was also raised with my my European yeah. side equally to the point when I went to Europe, they're like, oh my gosh, you're like a European kid. Yeah. You just don't speak our language. Yeah. That's how it was, you know? So when I come here and then this whole George Floyd thing happened in the world, well, let's say at least Canada and the U.S. went crazy. I Almost as if you have to renounce that European side. I, I felt the tension in a way that I've never experienced. Mm. Not to say there's no racism in Canada, because even my own brothers, you know, apparently I, I found out they had issues with like yeah. cops and stuff growing up. No, 100%. I, I, yeah. I literally call my cousin. Um, she's not biracial. I call her and, and ask for her to share her black experience when it comes to certain issues that wow, I don't feel okay. like I can speak on because I was sheltered, gratefully so, maybe, maybe not. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. But coming here, like I called my mom and I was like, I forget the conversation. It was like, I, I was venting loudly, not angry or anything. of like how sheltered they, mm. they've raised me. Like my dad is a dark skinned guy and he had cops follow him to the house because he matched a profile of the criminal or whatever. And, and I didn't experience most of that. I chalked it up to um, people who made comments, that's just them. Hmm. Shailene's too white. Well, that's that specific person's opinion. Hmm. Oh, Shailene's too black. That's that specific person's opinion. I didn't chalk it up to like a general experience. Yeah. So I never actually realize that so i i started becoming more vocal specifically during the george floyd specifically with indigenous and black issues and sort of researching that but then i had a talking to by my team let's say of like if you're not out there basically being a, a an activist fighting for the cause in person then like what you're saying ain't shit it's just regurgitated information i'm just retweeting shit with no real call to action mm -hmm. so Look, this whole divisive COVID thing, which I'm not going to talk on because I said I wouldn't, mm. but specifically with everything that's happened, I did make some posts and then I didn't make some posts. And now anything that I want to share, I kind of share behind the scenes. But, you know, again, I'm not there fighting for anything for or against in mm. person, other than ranting about my opinions to friends and family. But there's no place, in my opinion, for me to share anything about that. I don't think I have hmm. in a very long time because because in this specifically with this issue there's no uh oh yeah I hear what you're saying let's talk about my difference of opinion there's none of that it's fuck you you're wrong <laughs> my yeah. and you know it's, and vice versa so I am really hesitant to share anything political and it's like I feel like such uh a... the thing too that I also do if I know I'm going to share something that's going to have a lot of reaction is <laughs> deactivate twitter <laughs> no i i make a day of it oh so then i'll actually it's like i know i'm gonna get people commenting and some of those comments are gonna stick mm. so i'm going to talk to them i'm gonna take the day and have conversation i did that with the dave Chappelle thing <clears throat> do you know what i'm talking about the yeah i didn't know you did something about it though but i did mm. i i did i didn't <clears throat> post about it but i was very passionate about it mm. because i feel like people were missing the plot yeah oh, oh and yeah. And I did take a lot of issue with people that I personally know who would, who didn't watch the series or the, the, the special, mm -hmm. who were saying very, and I'm going to say wrong, very wrong opinions about it. And it's wrong because they didn't do their due diligence, mm -hmm. which is why I'm saying it's wrong. So I, I messaged them privately and I would say, hey, can I talk to you about this? Right? And that's how I would approach it. So... So going back to the black, and I learned this because during the, the Black Lives Matter, George Floyd situation, I was so offended that people who are white, my family members, would not say anything about it. And I said, mm. I'm confused. I very passive aggressive post. I said, I'm confused. Are you either, are you, um, do you not see what's going on or do you just yeah. not care? 
And that's when I realized, because my cousin, God bless her, she reached out to me in a message. And she's like, hey, um, she explained that her algorithm doesn't show anything. I was the only fucking black person on her list. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Her algorithm was like a bunch of birds or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, she genuinely had no idea. She's one of a few, not just her. But she, I bring this out. My cousin reached out to me. She's like, I didn't know. I did my due diligence to look this up. I'm so sorry. And then she started posting her own opinions to inform her people. Yeah. Like her list, not the white yeah. people. Like her list, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> the white tribe. <laughs> the white tribe. No, so it's like, so that's when I realized I felt like an ass because I was so passive aggressive and like hating everybody who wasn't speaking out against this. 